So to begin with we've got uh, default price lighting, uh, infinite plane in uh, default grey and this uh, model of the from the Stanford scanning repository of the Stanford Dragon also in default grey. Now I'm just going to modify the material of the Dragon so it's got no diffuse full specularity and I'm going to set the specular halo right up so you get a very extreme response from the specular channel there and, and that response is a result of the specular output of the default bright sun. Now if I modify the sky, so I'm going to turn the atmosphere off and set that to fully white and then use the image based lighting tab here to generate just using the sky a fully white 360 degree by 180 degree dome of white light so I'm going to only use 16 light sources to speed things up I'm going to render in scene here I'm going to get rid of the HDRI effect by setting that to zero so there's no diffuse output but there is specular output from the HDRI image and indeed I'm going to turn cast shadows off so light can arrive from all directions including going through the ground plane and finally now I've used this white atmosphere I'm going to set that to fully black in order to demonstrate that under ordinary circumstances even with full specularity and a fully white specular halo the default setting of the HDRI sky when you've generated it doesn't produce enough specular output to create a response now you can turn the specular output of the HDRI sky up but I'm not going to do that instead I'm going to make the material respond more dramatically and do this with the high power output that you can generate through the alpha channel from the deep texture editor so we're going to use that trick so if I put a blob in here and I'm going to hold the shift key down and go into basic and show you how to set this up we'll start with this check blue material because it doesn't have any phase settings or anything like that so it's quite a good clean starting point I go into the deep texture editor here and I'm going to open the filters and the things so you can see what I'm doing and in noise to get this working you need distance squared mode minimum octaves one you don't need to modify direction and 3d is good frequency needs to be minus one and we we'll just switch the output to alpha only at the moment that is an extremely high negative value and I need a positive value well I'm just going to drag this across to the second component and I'm going to modify this to have no output so that's just nothing and uh, I can set the octaves down to zero just to be efficient and then if I use difference here that will now provide from a negative output to a very high positive output so if I just check out of that you can't see the difference here but hopefully you'll be able to see the difference in the render so now the very low specular output from the multiple light sources generated by the HDRI image getting a very high positive response now this in turn can be mitigated by using metallicy but as things stand I'm going to choose a color here I don't know orange yellow purple I don't know yet I'll, I'll just modify something so it wants to be about the mid-range to get this effect working so if we'll use green and red and blue so to create a sort of a browny color now even with full mel metallicy setting under normal circumstances you don't get any modification here that's visible even though it should be transferring this color through the specularity channel and if modifying it the specularity response is so high it's not making any changes if we use a very high output it just switches the response off because it's in such an extreme range but what we can do is we can modify this output to a lower level but we still need this high specularity response so what I'm going to do is I can add this to the library so I've got it stored that's great and then in this second blob here bring that one back in from the library so I've got this high energy response and I can set alpha scale oh it's already set that's a bonus sometimes it's randomly set you never know and then I can use that to modify this value down even at very low settings though it's still too high for me to get the effect I want so what I need to do is go back into the deep texture editor for this second channel component here and I'm going to add another channel so what I can do is I'll just drag this nothing channel over here and set this to multiply and then I'm going to give it an output 
so that it's it's doing something so we'll just do sine output and a frequency of zero there you go so that's just providing an output and then in the filter for this component so you need these blobs to be selected use sine again and then you can use this sine wave filter here as a scaling factor for this and if you watch the stripes on this as the stripes spread out that's showing you that the outputs getting smaller and smaller it's actually getting into a range where it's usable so I'll leave it with some stripes that are visible so I've multiplied it down but it's still higher than the normal output level that you would get by setting the metallicity up at 100 so if I check out of here now oh, by chance it's actually arrived in a useful range so you might have to move this figure up and down but it's going to be a fairly low level and uh, you can see now that the specular highlight is getting suppressed in the middle remembering that metallicity modifies the response of the material according to the incidence angle of the camera arriving on the surface so where the camera is arriving and pointing perpendicular so we're, our view is perpendicular to the surface of the sphere here the diffuse effect is suppressing the color so it's subtracting it down to black uh, because you've got extreme responses it and we've got the uh, specular halo set right up you get quite hard edges as it as it reaches a threshold and goes through various transitions so these settings are quite critical even though there's only a small variation it's changing the threshold across that edge so you can see you can move it around a bit so if I set this down this value here if I get older now it's Camtasia Studio messing me around there I'll just have to check out well you'll see anyway that you now get this pronounced um, neon like edge it's not an even outline edge unfortunately because uh, this is still part of the reason for doing this research is uh, as part of the product that Horo and I are presently developing that allows you to produce uh, very even outlines around your models and control the that element but it is an interesting effect nevertheless and because uh, it's only working through the specularity channel you can turn the diffuse uh, sunlight output on and set the atmosphere well, back to say soft sky for example and that will not interfere with the effect in any way so we can have shadows and this effect coexisting with the output from the image based lighting now there is something else that you can do in the material lab here because this diffuse channel is just a color and bearing in mind as I said that uh, the this sort of range is what's required to get this to work about right at these present settings then you can drive this output here from from any kind of function you just need to make sure that the output colors that it's using are falling into a range where you can still get the effect working so for example I'll hold the shift key down and have a look in the library something I might have made earlier let's see uh, we can use to to provide an output it just needs to be a fairly low level output so it's not too too dramatic well, I suppose we can use it for a rainbow texture here there's a tutorial that shows you how to use this I'm going to reduce the frequency a bit there we go and uh, let's say make it spherical map see what effect that has so you can see at the moment that's it's absolutely pushing it to the very limit of the output and because these colors are primary colors they're remaining separate and the whites only at the edge but if you reduce the output of these probably to about half the level for each one so I'll just do that roughly then it'll fall closer to the range where it becomes useful for this effect and as uh, Camtasia Studio is not letting me get into this Hang on. Um, there we go that's not that channel I was after I want the blue channel here it is right okay thank you Camtasia Studio for making life easier for me there you go right that's it and now you can see that it's going to black in the middle because it's not to reach such a high level and you'll get a different effect I uh, don't know whether it's better or worse but I just thought it was interesting to mention that it is possible to use a procedural function to drive the color channel there so you can modify its response over the surface so anyway that's the end of the video I hope you found that interesting that you'll use this uh, method in your own renders and uh, go on to experiment further with these very extreme output uh, properties from the uh, deep texture editor okay then